Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 17. So in this tutorial we're going to work a little bit more with how our game looks visually. So we're going to work with a skybox, we're going to close this uh, room off we've got here and we're going to add a little bit of music as well. And don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and everything else on the channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So, a skybox. This is something that we'll never actually see within this scene. However, the skybox could provide a little bit of extra uh, imagery to the scene itself. And I'll show you how this can actually work. So firstly, let's acquire ourselves a skybox. Let's go to the asset store and let's type skybox. All one word, real simple. And as always, let's click free only because everything we do is for free. And you're presented with tons upon tons upon tons of different types of skyboxes. And feel free to explore like you've done previously in the asset store. But the one I've gone for and the one I'm going to use in this series is this one right here. Reason being is there's plenty to choose from and it is pretty good quality. And it is free, of course. So I've chosen this one and I have had no input from this. I've not even been in touch with the uh, developer of this per se. But uh, I want to use it because I feel this is good. So import, download, whatever. And uh, once it's done, it'll be in your scene, well, your projects, I should say, right here. And you'll have all of these. So how do we apply this? Simple. If we go to window and go to general and go, sorry, not general, rendering and go to light settings, it's right here. It's also worth noting if you're using an older version of Unity, you can just go to window and your light settings will be somewhere near the bottom of that menu. But if you're using 2018.2 onwards, it'll be in that sub menu. So we can either click the little radius button there and select. So we've pretty much dealt with skyboxes before. You know, we've got rid of it as it were. That's why we have none there right now. However, we can drag and drop into here from these skyboxes. So let's choose, what should we choose? Let's choose this one, drag and drop over here. And you'll see that it does change how this looks in here. And we can use this to our advantage. So I've closed that down now, keeping the skybox in place. However, I'm going to enclose this entire room now. So I'm going to take, if I scroll out, I'm going to take this right here, duplicate, and just bring it across. And once again, duplicate, bring it across, just to kind of enclose it. So we have a roof over our heads. And I probably should do it again just over here. Now I think that's encased everything. Yep, we can't actually see through. And I can't remember if I've said it in this series before, but whatever the camera doesn't see doesn't matter because it's only ever the camera that the player will see within the game. So even though it looks very messy outside of the boundaries, when we go inside the boundary, it's tidy and is how it should be. So now we've got this uh, to a point where it looks, uh, well, good look bad not entirely sure but it's again it's, it's all down to your personal style and preference so let's actually work with the lighting now to make this look how we would expect it so if we go back to window go back to rendering go to light settings we now have the option of changing the intensity multiplier but this isn't going to matter too much at this point simply because we already have the light source in here so if we change this to color It'll make a slight difference if we change it to black. However, if we go to a hierarchy and type in light, we could actually manipulate how this looks using these lights if we wanted to. But on the flip side of that, because this is not particularly a sky you would expect to see in, you know, at least in a survival horror that we're aiming for at the moment, you could always use a darker skybox like so. So I'm going to use this skybox for how this game is looking right now because I feel it adds a little bit more to how this scene looks. And we're getting there with the visual style that we want to present it in. And it's worth noting at this point, if you set your source to color and have it black, change it to white, you can see subtle differences within the scene. And this also does count when you're working with the materials as well. So if we were also to set, for example, this back to skybox and increase this, you're going to see a difference. But generally, I'm going to keep it as, let's have it about 0 0.5. There we go. So now let's select this table 
And if we click on the arrow next to it and click on the mesh, and then click on this down here in our inspect panel to expand the component for the material. Let's select the albedo image, which is this. And we've dealt with the normal maps before, haven't we? So hold control, press D, change to normal map, click apply. And then let's apply that normal map to material over here. And I'm going to increase the metallic just a little bit and maybe increase, uh, change it to albedo alpha and then increase a little bit more on the metallic and see how that looks. That doesn't look too bad. I'm quite happy with how that table now looks. It doesn't look as plain and as 2D. It actually looks a bit more like there's something to it. And let's see if we can do anything with the ammo box because that looks like just black uh, box in the middle of the room there. So let's change this now. So if we go to it and click on box, go to the material, click here, and ultimately, I believe, if I can remember which one it is, gosh, I'm trying to find the uh, material for it. I think it's this right here. So we may have to extract this material out of here. I'm not entirely sure. So let's let's give it a go. So hold control, press D on that material, and then drag and drop that material onto box 001. So I've not actually tried this myself yet, but we might just be able to do it like this. So take that, and now we are able to edit that material because we're using this material, not the material that's embedded in the prefab. So with that, what we can do is we can take this albedo uh, image, so this one, hold control, press D, change it to normal map, and click apply. And then let's add that to the material. So drag and drop over here. Don't think we can see too much of a difference. Let's increase the smoothness and increase the metallic and change it to albedo alpha and change the color a bit more white. And I think we can actually see it a little better. Yeah, so we have actually got something going there. So we've modified that. So you can see how the game is now changing its look based on what we're doing with materials. So it's not always just lighting. So I'm going to take one of these lights over here, one of these torches, hold control, press D. I'm going to bring it over here, over this way a little bit, and against this wall here. I should probably rotate, shouldn't I? So minus 90, and bring it into position on the wall. Now, is that a good position? Not sure. I'm going to have another one, just for good measure, down here. And probably one over the other side, again, for good measure. Now, lighting is... How can I say it? It can be a little bit restrictive at times. However, generally, you, you can probably have multiple light sources without having to worry too much. However, we will deal with it a little bit more as we go on, because when we get into the post-processing, which I've mentioned a few times previously, things will start looking a little bit better without so many lights. So what else can we do here? Well, we dealt with the reflection probes and whatever else last time. So we can, I guess, probably add them back in if you wanted to, but I think it's all dependent on how you want it to be. So if I add a reflection probe here, change to real time, you can see how much it's changing this whole area. And I like how that actually looks, to be honest. So I may increase uh, the box size, let's say 20, 20, 20, and bring it this way into this general section. Yeah, I think it's not too bad. In fact, I'll probably increase that to 30 by 30 by 30. Let's see how that looks. So let's place it in the center of where we want it to be, and that looks fine. So that is pretty much all set for how this now looks. There is one thing that I did want to change, though, because I've noticed a few people comment on this particular particle system. We did this quite a while ago, but I'm not happy with how it looks. I know a few of you aren't happy either. It looks a little bit too, not fake, but not quite right. And the best thing that you can do is rather than have the start size as three, have it as one. And also change the alpha down a little bit more to probably about 10, and then change the emission to well, probably not 100, but maybe 25. 
and press play. There we go. So we can see how this looks now. It's kind of looking a little bit better. It's looking much more like a survival horror now. What you would expect a little bit of a woo. Is woo the right word? I don't know if woo is the right word. Oh, we haven't got any ammo. Sorry. Okay, so I did say we we're going to have a little bit of music in this one as well. So we're going to quickly add in some ambient music. And we have that jump scare right there, but we're going to need to modify our scripts a little bit more. So I'm going to bring in this little audio sound, which you can get on the website for free. Head over there, downloads and assets, survival horror series, tutorial 17, and download the asset. So we're going to attach this to our music right here. So we have jump music. I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate that and drag and drop that music onto there and tick play on away. Uh, volume I'm going to have set as one and then rename the object to uh, just amp music. So what will happen here now is that we'll have two music uh, tracks trying to play but really we don't want that. We want one to stop and one to play and when the zombie's dead we want the original one to play. So before we play test this Let's go to our jump scare trigger, which is right here, and let's go into the script. So like I say, the idea of what we've got to do here is we've got to stop one music track from playing, or pause maybe. So, you know, you can stop, you can pause, it's up to you. Have the new track sound, you know, play through as it needs to. When the zombie's dead, you can either restart the original music or you can unpause that original music. But whichever one you choose, don't worry, I will show you how you can get whatever one you want. It doesn't really matter. You're still going to end up with the same result of one stopping and the other starting and then reversed when uh, the zombie's dead. So script is loading now. So what we'll need to do is we're going to need to add in one extra variable in this script and also in the zombie death script. So let's start with public. Okay, oh, yes, I know. I am enjoying Visual Studio, thank you. So public audio source, and we'll call it just amp music, just for short. So what we need to do is we've got door jump music dot play. Before that line in this coroutine down here, We'll have amp music dot, and you can either have stop or you can have pause. It's up to you, but whichever one you have, you would have the open close bracket and semicolon at the end. So it's either stop or pause. So I'm going to have stop on mine and save. Now what we need to do is head back to Unity and on that trigger, when Unity has compiled, there we go. We just drag and drop that and music onto there. And then the same with our zombie. If I can find him, zombie enemy, there he is. So zombie death, this one right here. Let's go into that script. And what we need to do is do the same. So public audio source and amp music semicolon. And we've got jump, music, jump scare music stop. After that, we can have amp music dot play. Up close bracket and save with a semicolon at the end. Head back to Unity, and once again, you just need to drag and drop onto there. So let's press play and test this out. There we go, so you can hear the ambient sounds there. Excellent. So let's pick up the weapon. There we go. Oh, well, and once again, Jimmy has forgotten some ammo. There we go. He's dead. He is dead. Nice. Okay, so 
that's pretty much all there is to it for that. So the next tutorial, I know I've said it, we are going to do post-processing. We are going to do it on the next tutorial because we're at that stage now where we want this to look absolutely awesome and post-processing will help us do that. So we'll also probably deal with uh, layers as well next tutorial because um, and I've kind of said this before our gun clips into the wall we're going to use a layer to prevent that from happening. So guys until that next tutorial thank you very much for watching.